Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a retrospective look at the Moto Active. Released on November 6th, 2011, this was one of the original smartwatches that ran on the Android operating system. The only other real competitors at the time were the iMWatch and the WIM-1. The iMWatch was underpowered and ran Android 1.6, and the WIM-1 was locked down in a pain in the ass to run Android apps on. What else was current at the time? Well, the iPod Nano 6th generation was the current iPod, and the iPhone 4S was the brand spankin' new iPhone. The Xperia Play was still considered a pretty cool Android phone too. The Moto Active was powered by a 600 MHz OMAP CPU, a Power VR GPU, and 256 MB of RAM. It also has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS, and it runs on Android 2.3.4 Gingerbread. It uses a 1.6 inch 220 by 176 multi-touch screen, and it also has five buttons and a soft key. Using the unit with the stock software is simple, even if it's a bit lacking. The most notable features were a music player, notification system for your calls and texts, and the main feature being the fitness tracker. Although it wasn't long before people figured out how to root it and install regular Android apps to give it a more regular Android feel. This is the reason I bought it and why it kind of became a cult hit. Having a fully functioning Android computer on your wrist at the time was pretty cool. So how did these things perform? Well, actually quite well, with the main limiting factor being the small screen resolution. MX Player worked for playing videos, gallery apps worked for pictures, Google Maps even worked for navigation and GPS. Many games function quite well, even some 3D ones. Even emulators, including the N64 and PlayStation worked. This is the main advantage the Moto Active had over the iMWatch, the WIM-1, and even the watches released in 2012 and 2013. It really was a pioneer in this respect. So, how well does it stack up today, nearly three years later? Well, aside from not being the most visually stunning watch out there, at all, it still performs quite decently. It is definitely falling behind in specs now, with dual core and higher resolution screens becoming the norm. It also lacks features like a SIM slot for the full independence some smartwatches are offering today. Compared to Android Wear devices, it is more versatile with the ability to install Android apps. Standard Android apps, I guess, but it doesn't compare in terms of a notification hub for your phone. Still, it is a device that some people still seek out, since it is still a pretty cool piece of tech. As for me, I'll never forget the excitement of rooting and playing around with it to have the most advanced smartwatch available for quite a while, actually. It's been an awesome unit for me, and I'll always cherish it. Until the battery inevitably shits the bed. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.